welcome to April. Well, hey, happy April. As you can see, I'm inside. That's because it's pouring outside. The weatherman tells me no rain today. Let me tell you what, the weatherman's lying again. But nonetheless, April's here, and it's been a really tough month for us. Um, I've been in Denver for the last three plus weeks. It's been great for getting research done for the layout. Not so good about building the layout. John, of course, he got back from Japan and he's been struggling with, uh, you know, I shouldn't say struggling. He's been spending time with his family and not really focused on the layout as it should be. John, on the other hand, has been doing pretty well. He's probably the only one of us that's been having a pretty regular schedule. Although, I think at times it's not been as regular as he'd like it to be. But nonetheless, here we are in April, and it is proof that, you know, we can't keep going at the in breakneck's pace that we always want to go at. And life sometimes gets in the way. But I still try to spend my time focusing on getting stuff done. Sean looked at me the other, uh, yesterday, which, by the way, was the first time we've had the, all three of us here to work on the layout. And kind of said, well, I'm surprised you've been traveling so much. And I kind of figured you would take a break. And I said, well, Sean, if I take a break, then none of this is going to get done. So I pretty much try to still try and have a regular schedule, even though sometimes I don't feel like it. But once I get started, I really enjoy what I'm doing. So. This month, I've got, uh, I've got the backdrops here I'm going to show you about. I'm going to talk about them a little bit. Got some bridge work that uh, Sean and me have both been working on each, two different bridges. And John's back, and he's uh, been working some on electrical, and so have Sean and me because we really want to try and get things together. And this week, um, while at the thing, while it's nothing really exciting, we've been working on making sure servers are all set, all programmed and all charged, and everything's working fine. John and couldn't keep up with us, and it's not a fault of John's. It just we were moving at such a breakneck pace that really the electronics were kind of lagging a bit. So we're spending the next month or so working on electronics. Not very exciting, but nonetheless, we still do other things in the meantime. But anyway, let's talk about backdrops. Now I did a video on doing clouds and basic clouds using a stencil. I like that method. Matter of fact, I still have it in a lot of my layout, and I probably will. Use some of that and a little twist you can see on this one here. I actually put in a little variation, a little, little color to give the clouds a little three-dimensional look. And I really like the effects of them. And they look really well. And that brings me to the backdrop. You know, the great opportunity I had to spend my time the last three weeks in Colorado with my camera and spend time meeting people like Ken, Ken Glover and, uh, and other locals there in the area and talk to family and friends while I was there. You know, I haven't been to Denver, well, I've been to Denver during the summer, but I haven't really been in Denver during the winter time. And of course, last week, it snowed in Denver. Now, I'm sure the folks in Colorado were not really pleased by all the snow, but for me, it was a great opportunity to get some photographs to see what these foothills look like with some snow on them. And guess what? That means version four of this backdrop, but that's okay. One of the things I want to talk about in backdrops is, you know what? It's just paint. I've got five gallons of this blue color paint, and I'm going to paint over this one. I'm going to paint over this one. This is the fourth time I've painted this, this scene here. And it's not a bad scene. It makes a great summer scene. When I'm modeling the end of September and October in 59, and there happened to be a lot of snow on the hills during that time period. So... Uh, sorry about the snowstorm there in Colorado, but hey, I'm thrilled to death because I got some great photographs. And so that's going to change some of that. Also, by talking, if you haven't been on the face group, um, we have a face page for the Colorado Front Range. Just look up the Colorado Front Range. You'll see the group. Ask to be joined into it. And you see a lot of what we're doing in here. And it's really kind of nice. And it's great because I get a lot of sharing and input from me. You know, when I'm standing there going, geez, I'm not sure this is really good. What do you guys think? Give me a suggestion. And that was really helpful, too, because some of the folks there from the Colorado Front Range reminded me that these mountains from a distance, especially from where the railroad tracks are, a lot of the times they're blue. And I tried to duplicate that in here, this area here, but 
when I got to see there with the snowstorm and all, I really became evident that they are much more blue, which leads me to part of what I do. Sometimes you need to just do a little bit of experimenting, and that's what this is. Now, this is a little too blue, but it gives me the opportunity to just kind of experiment with what's going on and use the paints and see how they work and everything else before I go and paint over everything that I'm doing. So it helps me kind of get things going. You know, painting is not my best skill. I'd be the first to admit it. This is not my cup of tea. But what I did is I spent a lot of time on YouTube and everything else looking at painters, watching what they do, learning what they're doing, taking their different techniques, seeing what I can do, experimenting on scrap pieces to see if I can get the same effect. It's just like anything else in modeling. It's technique. And that's what I'm going to show today. I'm going to do a, um, uh, show you a video of a time lapse of me actually painting this. Now, originally I was going to do this with Google Earth, which would have worked just fine. Good and bad about Google Earth. When you get down to lower level, you can get some good scenes. Sometimes you just can't get exactly what you want. And you know, Google didn't exactly build that for backdrops. They kind of built it so you knew what the area looks like and really kind of locally. But it does give me the feeling it would have worked really well for doing this. But because I had the opportunity to go to Colorado, it just gave me the opportunity to take a lot of photographs. So what I did is I used photographs to draw my images here. I'm not a creative drawler here, okay? Ask me to build a model, I can do that all day long. Tell me I have to put a mountain together, I'm like, okay, I know what to do. Build a river with those things? Yeah, I can do those things. I've done them enough times, I'm like, yeah, I can do this. Painting a backdrop? Not my cup of tea. But anyone can do it. I mean, Lionel did it in Train Masters TV, and he didn't feel like he could do it. I did this, and... You know, I'm not the greatest artist in the world, but it does work and it can be done. I painted these clouds using stencils and just my airbrush to, to bring in some darker areas. And it looks pretty good. Not the best, maybe? I don't know. I'm pretty pleased with them. I think everybody here was pretty pleased with them. But they're all going to get painted over blue again because we're going to turn our mountains snowy covered. The other thing you want to do is... You saw some of these squares, especially if you were on the Facebook page for the Colorado Front Range. I used these squares to develop the technique that I was going to use to do my ground cover out here. And the nice thing about it is I can set it up to my backdrop, and if it looks like it blends in really well, I'm going to go with it. And in this case, I didn't finish on my painting all the way because there's another layer of hills that are going to go down into here. They're going to be more into this color. But it allowed me to see, am I getting what I want? Am I getting exactly what I want in that blending of the foreground and the background? And that's what you really want to work for when you're working on a backdrop. So again, this is nothing more. It doesn't need to be perfect. What it needs to be is give you the image that there's something more beyond this 12 inches that I'm standing in front of. And that's all I'm trying to do. So I'm going to show you the time lapse. Take it for what it's worth. It's a nice piece of video. shows you how easy it is to draw these things and then just me painting them. And kind of experimenting with this a little bit, finding out what techniques work best for me. And again, we'll have another video when these finally get finished as we finish this area. The other thing we're going to show you this month is we're going to show you the two bridges that Sean and me have been working on and what we've been doing to put them together. It was really great to go out and actually take photographs of that bridges, those bridges. I was a little disappointed because the, pier, um, the, the pylon trestle bridge that I was going to build, well, all I've got is just some photographs that I picked up from, from uh, Google Earth and, and Google Maps because when I went to arrive to it, it's got a steel uh, trestle in there now, and I'll show you a photograph of that. But it's really great still to kind of get the feel of the scenery. And by the way, even though they had the different bridge, I saw where the old bridge from the 1900s was, and it changed some of the scenery that what I was going to do. So nonetheless, let's take a look at the video of the backdrop, and then we'll come back and we'll look at some photo uh, at the bridges and what we've been working on. So here we go. Okay, this is my first attempt. And basically, I've got uh, the photograph. I set my elevation to where I wanted to, and I'm just uh, tracing the mountain lines out. This makes it really easy to draw because then I don't have to be very creative. All I have to do is simply trace. 
And then I can close it off and you can see me start to paint. Now my first attempt here, I was kind of going for an abstract type look. So I was going to have darker mountains in the back and lighter up front and then eventually get up to the lighter color that I was looking for so that it would match uh, my uh, ground cover that I was basically doing. Um, again, this is my first attempt and um, I was not very pleased with it. So uh, nonetheless, uh, it, if you do want to do this, this will work and uh, works out pretty well. So in any case, um, I'll catch you here on my second attempt. <laughs> Okay, here at the second attempt, I drew the mountains just like I did in the first one. The only difference is this time, I tried to match some of the colors. And so I left the projector on while I was painting to help me find highlights and dark spots. It worked really well. Um, if you want to do this, I would recommend it. Um, the challenge with this is, of course, you know, you have to paint your base colors um, and then come back in with the different highlights. And so it worked pretty well. Um, and you're going to see I, I multitask quite often when, when doing this kind of stuff in a minute here. Yeah, there she is, my wife, coming in uh, with one of my sons asking me a question. And so um, I'm painting at the same time. It's not really that difficult. But uh, my wife is really fantastic for giving me input on how does it look, what do you think. I mean, after 30 years of knowing me, she, uh, she definitely does uh, know my modeling and seeing how it turns out. So this was the second attempt. Um, again, I walked away with it feeling it was way too dark and was not pleased with it and thought I could do a better job. So in a minute here, we'll pick up on the, uh, the third attempt, which is the one that uh, everybody saw on the Facebook page. It's just like the first one here, only it's much lighter. Okay, this is my third attempt and you just like the other ones, I drew out the things, just came back in, and uh, I'm just coloring in the hills. Uh, a couple tips on, on mixing colors. Uh, go lighter, uh, always a great suggestion. And the other thing is don't try to mix your paint homogeneously. A little variation is nice, a little dark, a little light, all kind of mixed in together. It gives it character, and um, I'm mixing onto a, a simple ceramic tile, just just pouring out my different paints and mixing them together. In a minute here, I'll begin stippling. This whole eight feet probably took me about an hour and a half to paint. Not very long at all. Um, it goes very quick um, and it's real simple. And uh, towards the end of this video, we're going to get to the cloud. We'll, we'll show some of the clouds going into there. Also on the stippling, just a heads up. Uh, don't mix very homogeneously either. You know, you've got some light and dark colors. Um, let them mix out. I've got some yellows in there. I've got a little bit of uh, uh, darker, uh, what was Mars black, and, and, and a little bit of greens and different greens. And, and I didn't, I mixed them, but I didn't try to mix them thoroughly so that they still created interest and character within the mountains themselves in the foothills here. Now, eventually, I'm, you're going to see me pull out the. Um, two photographs I used and and you're gonna see me grab my stencils the only reason why I turned on the photographs is it gave me a reference for where the clouds were at I didn't try to duplicate the clouds I simply used the same stenciling technique uh, the only difference is I took the stencils again and mixed up with my airbrush a uh, little darker white that I could spray on to give my clouds a three-dimensional effect and I think you saw in the uh, video earlier that, that it really does add depth 
to do those clouds. Um, so I'm just about done with the stenciling or the uh, stippling here. Also, the other thing, uh, which I don't think I caught on the video, is that I blend the bottom down to the bottom so that I can then put in the next set of heels, um, and it should be lighter, and and then eventually uh, work towards getting that direction uh, to the direction of getting matching the the uh, ground cover to uh, to my uh, my foreground. So here I am stenciling again. I'm pulling up the two videos up or the two pictures up, and I'm going to stencil them and then add, use my airbrush to kind of darken them so anyway we'll meet you on the other side well here we are at the first bridge and this is just the first piling that I built, um, or the first bent I built. And you can see we've got the shape of it. I've got a track here. I've got this in place. Now, the images that I have are from Google Earth, and that's it right here. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a closer photograph in just a minute of it. And this bridge was in place back in the 50s. Now, you can't see from this image right here, but what I will show you is the modern one that's going to show you that there was actually a bridge located back here, and the track used to come through here. And actually, as I stood on top of it, the bend that I have in here is exactly what they had there because they brought it out to bring this in, and this became a fill back in here exactly like I have it. Now, mine's been reduced from what really was being used, but it gives the image and the flavor of exactly what I'm looking for. So I've got this in place here. This is what I'm using. I use um, Black Bear Construction um, uh, jigs for, I have both, a, this is the six uh, leg jig and a five leg jig. Um, I, if you saw the Colorado and Coyote Creek, you saw that I build trestle bridges and, and I use the same thing. Um, I use these they're very handy they're very nice in this case this is going to be a a, a a ballast bridge so this is a trestle ballast bridge kind of a unique bridge kind of will be really cool to build and i'm really looking forward to it i've kind of started the process so that's our first one this is actually the um the little thompson river now we took a little artistic license here to be fair uh loveland's on this side longmount's going down this way down here uh, it, to be fair, the Big Thompson is located closer to Longmount, and the Big and the Little Thompson is located farther south. But it didn't fit on my railroad, and it didn't work as well as I wanted to. So what I did is I swapped them. This is the Little Thompson now, and the Big Thompson's down here. And we're going to show you here in a minute uh, the bridge that Sean and and all, uh, has been working on getting the, uh, the the pilings all built in for that. This is another. It's a um, it's a girder deck a girder what would it be it would be a, a girder ballast bridge and um, I'll show you some photographs of that I actually took, went to both these locations to take some photographs and I thought it was really helpful it gave me a real idea what the flavor of the area is kind of get an idea of what was going on in those areas so really look forward to it but again it's mono railroading, so uh, I get a little licensing here and I decided to swap the rivers around because it worked better for the layout and uh, that's kind of what we're looking at here. So um, this is the first one, and uh, these are just simply made out of wood. I like to work with wood, and so these are wood. Uh, this is a, a temporary one. It's actually kind of tall for what I'll need, but it works great because I can still run trains going through here while we're working on the bridges and other things. Keeps everything hold up. It looks really nice. So in a minute here, let's go take a look at the next bridge, which is just down the road. So here's the bridge. This is uh, the the other bridge we're, that we're going to be building. Now you can barely see it in this image here, and I'm actually going to show. It, but you can see the see the, um, the the pilings that Sean's got underneath here. This is the the steel girders that are going underneath this, and then this is the ballast deck that's sitting on top of it. And uh, I can see this from Google Earth. Uh, or Google Maps, one of the two. But I'll show you some photographs I took of the area here, and you'll see what we've got here. 
But uh, Sean's done a really great job. You can take a look at these. These are fantastic. I'm going to take uh, my steel beam out of here. These are really some fantastic looking uh, pieces here. They look just wonderful. Um, and uh, Sean, Sean built these, sandblasted them, and, and got them painted. And they, they look perfect for what we're going to do. So um, those are those are what we're going to be what the bridge looks like. Here, I'm going to take a cut over so you can see what the real bridge looks like and get a feel for what we're doing right here. Now this is the big Thompson River that you're seeing right here, and uh, so in any case, let's take a look at the photographs and we'll talk about those. So here's some of the scenery we've been working on. The little Thompson River is just just down here a little ways. Now understand that from uh, Loveland to Longmount, which is on just on the other side of this thing, is 18 miles. So we have these two rivers, the Big Thompson River and the Little Thompson River down there. This is the field that I was talking about. Um, I, as if you may remember, this was actually an open grid um, uh, bench area here. This is not some more than than a laminated roadbed that I was working with, and. Then what I did is I put in styrofoam to fill in some of my meads. I cut some styrofoam. If you saw uh, me uh, using the styrofoam cutter, this is a lot of what we did. We just sculptured this into place. And then to fill in the fill here, what I did is I took uh, great stuff foam. And I just kind of foamed it right alongside both sides of the edges here. And that kind of filled it in. And then I just took and carved this area down until I got what I wanted until I got the profile that I was looking for and everything. So I've got my fill into here. And then I just simply took some latex caulk and my lovely little hand in a latex glove, and I just kind of spread it over, over this whole thing to kind of get it a general feel. So I don't have to fill it all up with sand when I'm doing it. So what I'll do next is eventually sand will go over top of this. So it'll fill all the gaps and all the little air pockets that are in there. And I'll glue that in there. And then I'll put the ballast on top. So that works basically the same way that the railroads do it. They basically have a, where they do a field, they bring the soil in, they build it up, they pack it into here. Then they, and that's called the sub row bed. And then they turn around and put the first layer of ballast on top of it and then they put the ties down on top of it and then the rails on top of it and then they finish it up with ballast and that ties it and locks it all together. So I'm doing the basic same thing that they're doing right there. So you can see this will continue on all the way down through there. Now back here, this is of course the Thompson River, the big Thompson River, which we just showed you the bridge there not too long ago. But then this is this hill is one of the hills coming around and this is where it comes around and on the other side of this is the um, Great Western Sugar Mill that's just in uh, Longmount there, which I have some photographs of. And um, I'm back, I might share a couple photographs and it's run down and beat up and it may be standing. It may not be much longer. We'll see what happens. I mean, it was there just last week when I was there, but you know, it is falling apart. And as Ken Glover and me walked around and, and looked at different parts of the place, it is definitely falling down. Um, its days are numbered. But nonetheless, it was really great to go out and see that. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll take a look at some photographs with that. But as we go around there, we're going to come around, and on the other side is Longmount. And that was really a great opportunity to go out and see that. I've actually got it all laid out there. A um, couple of things that uh, I'll be able to uh, have on the layout. They had street running in Longmount, which Ken took me to and showed me what it would look like. And hey, Ken, thanks so much for doing that. It was really kind of helpful. And I enjoyed myself. I really did. Um, and so what we're going to do now is I'm going to break away and kind of show you a little of Ken's layout. I took some steel photos of, uh, of uh, some of his layout. He did some really very unique things. Now he's modeling Kansas and, um, a matter of fact, uh, Rock Island and Rock Island actually uh, appears on my layout. It actually, it will appear on the Southern end of the layout over here and heading on its way up to Denver and then turn around and come back down. So uh, the Rock Island actually comes into uh, Colorado Springs and then would shoot up to uh, Denver to the Union Station and that uh, the Denver rocket goes into there and it would deposit its, patient, uh, its uh, customers there and pick up new ones and then head back down south and that's exactly what, what it's going to happen on my layout as well. 
So um, let's take a look at Ken's layout. He's got some really neat things. In particular, I really liked his use of force perspective. He has a Z scale. The, the truck that we're going to show you is in Z scale. Now, I'm going to try and stack the photographs, but I didn't have a tripod, and I was unable to, to, to really set it up to stack it so that I could use a, a helicon focus on it. But we're going to give it a shot, see how well I did. Um, but... Uh, Nonetheless, it's a great to kind of see different layouts. Ken also has a painted backdrop. He's also got a portion that's photographed. Just a very, very uh, enjoyable time to, to meet him and his wife. And uh, she's, by the way, she's quite the accomplished artist. I was wondering if I could commission her to come here and do some painting. I don't know. We'll see. But nonetheless, it was a great time. And uh, so let's take a look at Ken's layout and, uh, and what's going on on his layout. So here's some photos of Ken's layout. This is a John Deere against a photo backdrop. This is really a nice scene here on this thing. It looks really very good. Ken's layout is a shelf layout, and here we see some of the uh, track work, and it's really nice. The static grass is really pretty cool. Um, this is a my first of my stacked photos, and not bad. Uh, Ken used a great scene here with the main and the and the elevations coming down. And then this is the Z scale on the HO. Nice use of force perspective. Really very nice, Ken. Appreciate it. So once again, thanks to Ken. And I really enjoyed my time there. And uh, it seems like a hodgepodge things of going on here on the layout. And quite frankly, they have been because, you know, I've been here just on the weekends for, and I maybe get four, maybe eight hours out here on the weekend and uh, no time to really set up projects which is you know look at if you're if you're the owner of the large layout and your crew's coming out that's a large part of what your job is is getting projects set up getting everything all kind of lined up and get it going and i really have been neglectful in getting that done mainly because well i just haven't been home to be able to set projects up but the crew has done a fantastic job the next month we're going to be doing a lot of um wiring setting up uh, my octa eights from tam valleys my frog juicers from tam valley and getting those things going also we'll be dabbling a little bit in jmri because once you get those things set up you need to be able to connect to make sure that everything's all lined up in the right position so i'll be starting to dabble a little bit in jmri while these things don't make great videos nonetheless it is what i am going will be working on I'll also be working on this area in particular we'll be repainting this again so you might see that change next month as well if i'm not traveling as much as i have been you know i've caught 35 flights already this year um and then i'll also be working on uh, this part of the scenery so i'm hoping we'll be able to see some of that the bridges are, will be coming along as well so I uh, will give a little update on those as they go on. But I hope this was at least inform, in, helpful in maybe painting backdrops and seeing what, how we blend things together. And then just it's always nice to see somebody else's layout. So, hey, if uh, you join the Facebook group and you happen to hear, oftentimes I let you know, hey, I'm going to be in this area. And uh, if I am and you want me to come out and see your layout or something like that, please let me know. I'm always willing to come out because I've never met a layout yet that I didn't learn something from. So in any case, you have yourself a great month and happy modeling.